welcome back to my channel. Last week I posted a classroom setup video and showed you how I was setting up my classroom in the middle of this pandemic and how I had to get rid of a bunch of my furniture and move my desk far apart. Today's video, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update about what teaching is going to look like for me in the fall because things have changed since my last video, which was only a few days ago, but I feel like things are just constantly changing. So I will give you an update on that. I also have two projects that I wanna to do today. The first is a quick and fun classroom project that I'm super excited about for when we eventually do go back to the classroom. And then the second project I wanna to do today is tie-dye a sweatshirt. I talked about wanting to tie-dye a sweatshirt in one of my past videos, and it took me so long to finally get the tie-dye kit in the mail, but I have it now. And so I'm hoping to do that as well. So I figured while I'm waiting for the tie-dye, I can update you on my teaching situation for the fall. If you are new here, my name is Molly Malloy and I teach fifth grade in Southern California. You can also follow along with me on Instagram at lessons with laughter, where I share lots of teaching ideas, classroom library organization, and so much more. Okay. So for my first project, I am using these super cool jars that I got off Amazon. I'll make sure I link them below. I've actually ordered them in the past for something else and I love them. I love that they are plastic and so they're perfect for the classroom. And what I wanted to do was I posted in my last video about how I was looking for um, a jar that said rewards, like my friend Kim's at Elementary in the Mitten and I did not find one. So what I figured I would do is make my own fun reward jars and I wanna do one for erasers like she did and then one for stickers because my students love those like hydro flask stickers. So I think I'm going to do like this middle size for erasers and then the bigger size for stickers. So I'm going to make a vinyl label for them with my Cricut. <laughs> I do not have a desk at home, so when I need to use my Cricut, I just set it up over here on the kitchen counter. Okay, so I'm trying to weld all these letters together now, um, going down here, but when I click weld, I don't know why it's doing that to the E. I love Google. This is what popped up. Thank you, crafting in the rain. So we are gonna try this and see if it helps. Yay, it worked. <laughs> Okay, so that worked. I'm so excited. And then you click on make it. And there they are. All right, time to cut them out. Here's what it looks like when it's cut out. So now I'm going to cut it into a smaller piece and I'll show you how I do the next step. Okay, then I peel off the vinyl and then the parts that I want to stay down, I have this little like weeder tool they can also use to kind of push those parts down. Okay, so now I have my things cut out. So I think I said I'm going to have this one 
the erasers. So I'm gonna put it on like right about there. And then this one will say stickers. So I cut a piece of transfer paper for each one. And then I'm gonna start with the eraser one. So I'm just going to peel this off. I totally should have done my nails for today's video. I didn't realize my nails would be so up close. Okay, so I peel it off and then put it down on here. I'm gonna use this little tool thing to like rub it down real good and then flip it over and peel it off and then it'll stick to the transfer paper. Then I'm gonna get the jar and put it on where I want it. And then I'm gonna use the same tool again <laughs> to just go over it and make sure that it is down all the way. And then when you pull up the transfer tape, ta-da! Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Okay, here is how they turned out. I am so excited about them. And then now I just need to add stickers and erasers. going to have a snack before I do my next project, but I thought I'd share a couple of my favorite snacks with you. This is one of them. It is the saltwater taffy from Trader Joe's. It has cherry, watermelon, and strawberry flavors. And, oh my gosh, it is so good. I love this. This is my favorite taffy. I was going to say Laffy Taffy. This is my favorite taffy ever. Look what just came in the mail. Are you ready for this? Oh, oh my gosh. I am so excited. Someone who I follow posted about these on Instagram and I am like super easily influenced, especially when people are posting like cookies or sweet treats. And so I ordered a box right away and it was so good. This is actually my second box. This is my favorite there. Vanilla bean crispy is my favorite flavor. This one I haven't tried. Last time I got the sugar cookie, I think with sprinkles. And then this time I'm trying the fruity cereal crispy. I mean, that just looks so delicious. I'm so excited. And the box that I get, I think you can order like groups of four. And so I got four of these and then four of the vanilla bean ones. The store is Bliss and Baker. And I am so excited. They have some other flavors too, but I think I will always get these ones because they are my favorite. And then I'll switch it up and try other ones too. But love their Rice Krispie Treats so much. And I, I know I talked about it in my last video, but I am obsessed with this stuff. It is so good. There's This is the cookie or the chocolate chip cookie dough flavor that I love. And then the peanut butter flavor that is really good. Too. And then like a, I've got a bunch of for my tie-dye. project for school and then my next project is just for fun because I've been wanting to do this forever and I am going to be tie dyeing on a sweatshirt so I just ordered this is just like a plain white sweatshirt that I got off Amazon and then this tie dye kit I also got off Amazon it took like two months to arrive I feel like so long but it's so worth it and so I'm gonna pick out like the rainbow colors 
and I'm gonna try the ice tie-dye. So we'll see how that goes. I just watched a few different YouTube videos to try to figure it out. I feel like everyone does it a little bit differently, but I'm super excited to try it out. I really want to go for like a more like pastel-y watercolor. I just got this mask recently from Etsy and I love these colors. So I'm hoping to get something like this, but on my sweatshirt. Okay, so the first step says to soak it in cold water for about 10 minutes. I have no clue why, but we're just gonna try to follow the directions that everyone else did and hope that mine turns out just as cute. up where I'm actually going to like do the tie-dye and people have done like different things like some people use a big tub some people use like a tiny little colander I'm just going to use this clear plastic tub and then I'm gonna try a drying rack I know some people say you don't need one some people use one but we're just gonna try this setup right here and see how it goes <music> squirted some a little too far so I'm super glad I had that trash bag there and then it's slowly starting to melt and drip down okay so while the ice is melting I thought I would give you an update on what teaching this ball is going to look like for me as of right now. Of course, as we all know, this year things are changing all the time. When I recorded my classroom setup video a few videos back, of course, we thought we were going to be starting school in person in the fall. And then a few days later, we found out it was actually the same day that our district was going to put out the plans for what going back to school would officially look like. And that very same day, our governor put out an announcement saying that in order for schools to go back and start school in person, their county has to have been off the monitoring list for 14 consecutive days. And so my county is still on the monitoring list and it doesn't look like we are going to be getting off before our first day of school. So it looks like at this time that we are going to start the year with digital learning. Of course, that could all change. We still don't have our official plan from our district on what that will look like for us and kind of what to expect. So we are still waiting on that. But as of today, recording this video, it looks like we are going to be starting the year with digital learning, which of course, like all teachers out there, I have super mixed feelings about, but I know that this is not going to be a normal school year. There will probably be a lot of changes throughout the year and a lot of things that just are different than usual. So just trying to be flexible and know that whatever happens, I will do my best to be the best teacher for my students. So 
that's an update of where I am now in terms of the fall and going back to school. We are starting the year with digital learning and then I have no clue when we will be back actually teaching in person in our classrooms. A lot of that just depends on the data and when our county goes off the monitoring list. So that's the update for what teaching will look like for me in the fall. Leave a comment below and let me know what your school is going to be doing for the fall and where you are located because I know that just different states, different places have completely different back to school plans this year. All right, it is time to get ready for dinner. So I'm gonna do that. The tie dye is still out there. The ice is still melting. I put it in the shade so that it would take a little bit longer for the ice to melt. I don't know if you want it to melt fast or slow, but I will show you an update on that. And then later tonight, if the ice is all melted, I will wash it and everything. And then I'll show you what that looks like when it is done. Okay, so here's an update. It's been a little over an hour. I'm super glad I ended up using that tray because I don't think I would have wanted it soaking in all that different color mix. So, so far it's looking good. I know a lot of people said that they left theirs overnight or from six to eight hours. However, I want to make sure that mine is pastel colors. So I'm probably gonna give it a couple more hours until all the ice until all the ice melts and then I will rinse it out and throw it in the wash. Fingers crossed that it turns out. Okay, the ice is all melted. Look at that. Super excited. I think I'm gonna let it sit for like another hour maybe and then I'll throw it in the wash, but I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, I'm pausing the clip here real quick just to let you know about what I did to wash it. So after I rinsed it out with cold water in the sink, I threw it in the washing machine. I read so many different conflicting things about whether to wash it in hot water or cold water. I ended up doing cold water. I washed it by itself, but I set it to large load and then I threw it in the dryer just like normal. Okay, you guys, it is the next day, but look at how my sweatshirt turned out. I love it so much. The colors are like perfect and exactly what I wanted. Pink and purple are my favorite color. And so I did those at the top and I did more of them, but you can see it's got all the rainbow colors. And here, let me put it on for you real quick. So you can see how it looks on. I like love it so much. I'm so happy that I finally went through and did it. I actually am making another one right now that is just pinks and purples. I'm super excited about that one. I'm also thinking about putting some kind of a word here like in white text. I don't know what that would be. Like I don't know if it should just be like teacher or I have a weekend sweatshirt that I love that I wear all the time. I don't know. So if you have suggestions, leave them down below for me. But since I'm going to have two tie-dye sweatshirts, one of them I think I might do something with. I'm not sure exactly, but I love it so much. I'm also super curious if any of you guys have tie-dyed recently. I have been wanting to do it for months and then I just finally got around to it this week. Alrighty, I am going to go ahead and end this video now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!